The State Crime Commission has been infiltrated by organised crime to the highest levels. This now established fact comes through yesterday's conviction of Mark Standen, Assistant Director of the Crime Commission. Mark Standen faces up to life imprisonment after his conviction on charges that he conspired with others to import 300 kilograms of the precursor drug pseudoephedrine, which could be retailed into $60 million worth of ice or crystal meth. Police Minister Mike Gallagher has announced a judicial review of the Crime Commission. But other influential observers say more is needed. With me now is Philip Bolton, SC, Vice President of the New South Wales Bar Association and a spokesman on this matter. Mr Bolton, welcome. Why do we need a wider or deeper inquiry than that ordered by Mike Gallagher? Mike Gallagher's inquiry is welcomed, but it's about structure. It's about the model that should fit the Crime Commission. I suspect that the inquiry is not designed to determine whether or not any other offences have uh, taken place at the Crime Commission. What is your evidentiary basis for asking for a wider and deeper inquiry? Well, the evidence at Mark Standen's trial made it plain that he was well and truly in involved in providing information to his corrupt contact. And it's unlikely that he just jumped into it on that occasion for the first time. It's also clear that uh, his involvement with informers was not properly documented at the Crime Commission. Protocols weren't followed. This goes to supervision, uh, does it not? You, uh, Four Corners on Monday, I understand, digs deeper into the Standen case and looks at his connections and the supervision question. You assisted that program. Can you tell us, is police corruption still embedded in New South Wales? Well, of course, there's always going to be somebody who does the wrong thing, whether it's in a police force or any other organisation. But we went through a Royal Commission in the mid-90s, Mr Bolton, and, and the public hoped, I think, that it was over, that uh, the, the culture had changed. Are you telling us it hasn't changed? There, there will always be a need to be on the lookout to make sure that it's not on the cards. To redeem the culture the police did actually catch up with Standen in the end, did they not? Yes, but that was the federal police who investigated him on a tip-off from international police, I believe, the Dutch police. The people he worked with day in and day out for more than a decade, they didn't pick it up. If there is a wider inquiry and the future role or the future existence of the Crime Commission is brought into question, uh, what should replace it? Well, I don't think the Crime Commission should be abolished. Uh, there is a role for a commission like the Crime Commission. A defence barrister like you? I mean, you don't like the Star Chamber. You defence barristers don't like the Star Chamber. Uh, powers that it has. It was set up by Neville Rand in 1986. Uh, witnesses, don't, uh, get, uh, witnesses don't have the right to silence. As a barrister, this is anathema to you, isn't it? Well, we're also realists that in the 21st century there are occasions when those sorts of powers can be used. The New properly. South Wales Bar Association supports the Star Chamber right to silence powers of a crime commission, does it? We're realists. We think that the New South Wales Crime Commission, the Australian Crime Commission, ICAC, uh, Police Integrity Commission and many other commissions like this throughout Australia already have these powers and there will be occasions when they need to use them. Because uh, the drug trade, uh, the outlaw motorcycle gangs who run the amphetamine trade in, uh, in Australia, they're so powerful and uh, they're, it's such a lucrative trade. Well, the reason why we have these extraordinary organisations is to deal with the investigations that are too hard for ordinary police powers. OK, if you want it to survive, what about an organisation like the Police Integrity Commission, which has been set up after the Wood Royal Commission, uh, to look at uh, integrity of police officers? Uh, what does it say about our investment in that institution? Well, I think the Police Integrity Commission does a very good job, but unfortunately, I don't think that they're properly resourced. Uh, it was only after Mark Standen got arrested that the Police Integrity Commission were given the job of looking at the Crime Commission. 
but they already have the rest of the police force to look at. Well, they've got an inquiry which resumes on the 5th of uh, September into the operations of the Crime Commission and its staff in relation to cr uh, recovery of the assets of crime. Uh, isn't that fair enough without a wider uh, inquiry going on a fishing expedition? Uh, I think the two need to go hand in hand. The Police Integrity Commission are looking at a particular aspect of the operation of the Crime Commission. The government rightly sees that there's a need for a wider or different model of oversight. It's really necessary that these commissions that meet in secret, force people to answer questions against their will, are from time to time looked at by an independent arm's length person. Um, well, the, so the parliamentarians say they could have a parliamentary committee looking at it. Would that be adequate? I think there should be a parliamentary committee. There's a parliamentary oversight committee for most of the other organisations like the Crime Commission. I think there should be a, uh, an inspector that's got a standing commission to look at what the Crime Commission is investigating. An inspector, an inspectorate of the Crime Commission. An inspectorate or an inspector general is a model that is used in other organisations like this where someone like a Supreme Court judge or a retired judge can go in whenever they think it's necessary and proactively investigate what's happening. Uh, in the macro sense, it's, we're still looking at just a few bad apples, are we? Well, that's likely to be the case. However, the Crime Commission was such a small barrel that one bad apple in that barrel made a very big difference. Philip Bolton, thanks very much. Pleasure.